Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here in the International Center Kitchen. Uh, I'm Lexi. I'm Michelle. I'm Lillian. We are going to share our own experience of adjusting to Dell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to jump right into it, we're gonna, I guess, talk a bit more about our background, where we're coming from. Oh, you wanna start, Michelle? Yeah, yeah, I'll start. Like I said in some of the streams, I was born and raised here in Halifax, so I've lived here my entire life. I am a Canadian citizen, but my family is from Trinidad and Tobago, which is a small island in the Caribbean off the coast of Venezuela. It's been really interesting to see both sides. My parents came here, one, one came here when they were eight, and the other came here for university when they were 21, so it's nice to have both experiences. Well, I'm also a Canadian citizen, also the child of immigrant parents. My parents immigrated here from Taiwan before I was born. I grew up here, was born in, or not here rather, <laughs> um, in Mississauga, which is a small, <laughs> so I far say, off. <laughs> you are Haligonian. <laughs> Trying to claim Haligonian <laughs> status. Um, but yes, yeah, so Mississauga, a small suburb outside of Toronto. Grew up there, went to school, and now I'm here in Dell trying to try my best to fit in with the Haligonians who apparently don't accept me as one of their own. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. You get there. You get there. <laughs> as for me, I come from China and I just arrived in Halifax last year August, so I have been living here almost a year. Exciting! <laughs> so how are you liking it so far? Uh, I'm pretty enjoying the life here because people are nice, even though strangers we can say hello. And there are people holding doors for you in the university. Yeah, there definitely is, like at least in the neighborhood that I live in, which is like right behind Howe Hall, one of our residences here. Catch our Howe Hall sneak peek videos and our sneak peek videos for all the other residences yeah. as well. But yeah, I live in a neighborhood right behind Howe and it's a super like nice neighborhood. Same thing, like people will say hi to you on the street. If you don't, I'm kind of glaring at your back as you walk away, <laughs> probably. <laughs> you can tell that person's from Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Slutting a little Canadian rivalry there. But another thing that I thought would be interesting to talk about in this chat is actually traveling to Canada and, and what it's like to travel for the first time. Because some of you may have traveled for a very long time already with your family or by yourself. Some people may never have flown on a plane before. So I just wanted to extend that out to you guys. What do you guys want to mention about that? Like for me, it's quite a bit long from China to Halifax. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too long because I first fly it's since like eight, 18 hours. And then we have a couple hours stay in different airport. I even stay one night in Toronto's airport. It's better for you to bring your water bottle but without water, bring a blanket and uh, some snack for you to eat in the airport. Mm -hmm. So how about you? The flight from here to Toronto is about a two hour flight. So, you know, I, there's really nothing I can complain <laughs> about compared to 18 hours. Personally, I'm not a fan of flying at all. Airports are just not a fun time generally. I think my outlook is I just go into it expecting the worst and then, you know, I'm usually <laughs> impressed <laughs> at least. Or Keep your expectations low. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I've been traveling back and forth to different places, but mainly Trinidad and Tobago, where my family's from, for a very long time. I find that I'm not a bad flyer. I usually try and find things to do while I'm in the airport, like I'll, I'll draw a little bit or I'll try and bring something to read with me. Usually it's the jet lag that bothers me. So for those of you who don't know what jet lag is, is that when you have one flight or more than one flight, and you're lacking sleep, <laughs> it can sort of mess with you, especially if you have time changes that you need to get adjusted to, so you can feel very tired for a series of days as you catch up and your body gets adjusted to that time. So you want to make sure that you get enough sleep, whether you're in an airport, on a plane if you can, or when you first get here in Halifax, you want to make sure that sleep is a priority, you're staying hydrated like Lillian said. What about you guys? Do you have any tips for jet lag? How was the jet lag when yeah. you got here? Did you have to adjust to it? Yeah, like first a couple of weeks I fell asleep in the like about 8 p.m. <laughs> and I just go to bed and I wake up naturally 6 mm. p.m. in the morning. Like the first couple hours when I woke up, I feel like it's so refreshed. But in the afternoon, I get super tired and first sleep again early. So <laughs> it's like repeat about a week afterwards. I'm pretty adjust to the life here, mm -hmm. the time here. 
Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, I, sometimes I feel like that all the time, and I'm not even jet lagged, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, our, our first impressions. How did you kind of feel when you first got to Dell? Well, something you guys need to know about me is that I come from a Dell family. So what that means is that all of my family members have gone to Dell, <laughs> and I've spent a lot of time on the campus even when I wasn't a student here. So I'm pretty adjusted to the campus and, and what's a, what's going on. For me, it was mainly getting adjusted to the different kind of courses and the lecture style and making new friends as well because a lot of my friends went to Ontario <laughs> to do their their degrees so it was it wasn't that bad of an adjustment but there are still some things that I needed to get adjusted to. For me I was like whoa I got to the new university <laughs> I'm so free I'm just with my friend I can get to a class on my own I can make my own schedule and for the first day I came to Dow I look at the map on Google to find my class buildings and to see how does it looks like. Mm -hmm. Everything is brand new. Well I would say definitely my most standout memory of when I first got here is the orientation experience. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about orientation in the Facebook group so if you're still considering it make sure to sign up it's a great experience to have orientation week is pretty crazy from my eyes i experienced it as being pretty crazy there's just lots of people most people have no idea what's going on yeah they don't know where they're going you're kind of just following the crowd most of the time <laughs> so it's not always the most organized but you kind of just find excitement in the chaos i suppose yeah there's a lot of stuff that you can do and i will mention that o week that we're talking about is the regular orientation so that's the one that starts on september 1st not international orientation that is a separate orientation that starts on the 27th of august so those are separate registrations so make sure you're aware of that i think my favorite thing from o week was probably dal jam which is just this massive concert that you have in the quad and everyone's there like you see a little bit of upper yeah. years sneaking <laughs> in as well to, to join in and and i really liked it the yeah. first time we went so. yeah now that you say that that was also one of my it's just so funny because i remember the year that we had it well i'm sure i think this is kind of how it is every year yeah. in the three hours before the concert you just start listening because usually it's some like kind of small band that like maybe yeah. not that many people have heard of yeah. so in the couple hours before the concert you start listening to their music intensely and then like you know just become a super fan in three hours do all your research now you're ready to go to the concert and have yeah, a good exactly time right. yeah and when you're standing in the crowd you can talk to people around you you can find the same hobbies and interesting mm -hmm. things such as the songs you like and uh, find your friends yeah. And they also, um, I think it's super cool how they set up the stage right in the quad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so some of our tips in some of the challenges we faced. I'll, I'll mention this again. When it comes to making friends, it can sometimes be challenging to put yourself out there. I'm, I'm one of those people. I am very kind of shy when it comes to making new friends, but you just kind of have to be brave and put yourself out there. and. You can do that in small steps too, like finding things that other people share in common with you. I, I met a lot of people who liked music at Dal Jam I'm, and just regular orientation events like your icebreakers and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and we remain friends after orientation. I still wave and, and say hi to them when I see them. So. That's a nice way to do it. Anybody else with challenges? Don't feel like English is your second language. Like it's, they understand it and just be brave to speak. Maybe speak louder, slower, and people are patient to listen what you want to say. Just try to talk to more people about how you feel, how is your life, and ask people their experience in Dalhousie or in other province in Canada. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm okay. Me speaking this, I'm being like hypocritical I guess because I was definitely like same boat as Michelle like I'm pretty bad when it comes to talking to new people I'm shy I don't like like I don't know I'd, I'm like one of those when I was a kid I used to get too nervous to order for myself at restaurants so you know, you know. relatable <laughs> exactly the first year like residence experience for me at least was very high energy so you kind of get there everyone like leaves their room open like people go around to different rooms to like introduce themselves and it's almost hard not to socialize yeah. but like even despite that 
it was still kind of hard for me. Even though people are like always coming up, they're like asking you to go out and do stuff. Like people want to meet you and make friends. But you know, from my end, I kind of struggled with that. So I think that the attitude to kind of have with that is just to like, people are asking you to go, you know, like you should just kind of go along with it. Like I'm sure that there's some sort of organized event that like there's also going to be like group leaders there that will kind of facilitate that interaction. So a week orientation is like very much set up like for you to meet people like they really encourage it a lot of the events are like based around socializing so it's just really great to like throw yourself out there while you have that opportunity oftentimes as the year gets on it kind of might get harder because there's less well you have to more like during a week all the opportunities are presented to you and then later on in the school year it's like you have to go out and seek out those opportunities yourself yeah for sure i'll, I'll say that definitely as someone who is off campus, it was a little bit harder just because, like Lexi was saying, in residence, you have people that are like right next door that mm -hmm. are coming and inviting you to all this stuff. But even though I was off campus, I was still able to find ways to connect with people both in residence and living in apartments and stuff, and we would still do stuff together. And I think it's really important, like outside of orientation, when you're still trying to make friends and, and connections in class, that everyone's in the same boat, you know? Like, they're, they're all experiencing university for the first time, for the most part. So being able to reach out and, and talk to them about common things that you share is, is something that's important, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing, like, how do you feel like when you live apart from your family? Oh, that's, I guess, kind of a tough one there. My family, like I said earlier, they're living in Mississauga, just outside of Toronto. I'm going to back to visit my family, leaving this week, actually, so I'm really excited about that. But I haven't been back to see them in a very long time. Last summer, I spent the entire summer working away from home, so it's been a really long time since I've been able to uh, be in Saga <laughs> and lurk around with the other Saga people. So, yeah, I mean, homesickness, I call my mom fairly often, so... I, I would say that's part of how I cope with it. Often or too often? <laughs> like how, um, how do you gauge it? I'm gonna say that often, when exam season comes around, too often. <laughs> oh yeah. And for me, since my parents are all in China and I'm the only child, so I miss them so much. Mm -hmm. So the thing I usually do is we have video chat every week, mm -hmm. at least once. Yeah. And, uh, for the other time, I just send chat to my friend and then make other friends in Halifax, make their whole the home away from home. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm here and I'm currently living with my parents, but they like to go away every now and then, so it's nice to have that balance between living with them and then having the house to myself. What about any challenges that you faced when you were adjusting to the culture in Halifax? For the culture, especially in classes, the professors always ask questions and we don't need to hands up or something like that. We can just speak out of our thoughts. We don't have to stand up. So it's quite different from what we have school in China. For me personally, Mississauga is a very much immigrant community. There's a lot of immigrants there. Like it was like one of those where it's actually like Canadian people. like. Born and raised Canadian people were actually the minority and most people were like there was a lot of um, East Asians people from China a lot of people from India as well so coming here it was actually a big difference for me especially the university culture kind of hits you pretty hard you know people are just the enthusiasm to like do all the university things is kind of um, overwhelming it was overwhelming and different for me it's not anything that I, I'd experienced uh, before in high school yeah. Yeah, I'll speak to university culture as well because it, it, it is a different lifestyle and you have a lot more freedom compared to when you're taking classes in high school because you, you're in class all day in high school and then you transition to university and you only have say like maybe two or three classes but there's blocks in between where you are supposed to study and but it's really up to you to, to make sure you're managing your time effectively. So that was, that was a change, I think. Mm -hmm. Hello, again. We were filming and then our camera died. 
So here we are <laughs> the next day and we're just wrapping up the video. So we wanted to thank you guys so much for tuning into all of our streams. We really had fun talking to you guys about different things about Dal and, and coming. We hope to see you guys at orientation. So we will be here, we'll be in and around. We'll probably get to meet you guys face to face. So that's super exciting. See you soon. See ya. See ya.